Okay, so for this style of handle with vinyl on one side and cotton on the other, you'll need to cut your handle two inches wide by the length given in the pattern for the vinyl. For the cotton, I like to cut my cotton one and three quarter inch wide by the length given in the pattern. If you're making handles that are going to be hidden in the seams, so at the top of the bag, the seams are gonna be hidden and you're not gonna see these short raw edges, you don't need to do anything with them to finish them. But if it is handles, like these handles, that I'm going to be using where I'm using hardware and I'm going to see my edges, you want to take this and fold it up so that it's a quarter of an inch and then you'll press it and then you'll press all your handle again into the center just as we did for the fabric ones. So same thing that we did for the fabric ones, you press the short edges in, by, but these ones are by a quarter of an inch on each short edge. So that means the length given in the pattern to cut your handle, you want to cut it a half an inch longer because you're folding these raw edges up by a quarter of an inch. The way I'm doing these handles is her option for having no hardware. So these short raw edges will not be seen once the bag is constructed and completed. So I don't need to do anything. I can leave these edges raw. So again, you'll notice just like I did for the fabric ones that I've pressed my long raw edges in to meet the center. So same thing, press in to meet the center. You can draw a center line. You can also use double-sided tape on each side to hold this down. And then repeat that for the other cotton handle. For your vinyl, you'll take your marking pen and you'll mark down the center so that you have a center line the whole length of the handle. Once you do that, you can use double-sided tape to hold it down or you can just use clips and clip it so that it meets that center line on both long raw edges. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clip it now. Even when you use double-sided tape, sometimes I find it lifts. So I still use the pin of the clips. You don't want to use pins because pins leave holes in vinyl cork or faux leather. So you want to use wonder clips. If you don't have wonder clips, binder clips work. You can use um, the little hair clips. That, they're called alligator clips. Even um, clothespins will work as an option. And it's nice because clothespins are long, so that makes them easier to grab. So now that I have it all pinned and this all pressed, this will make sense why I've cut this slightly smaller because you're going to have an eighth of an inch gap along each edge so that you just see a bit of the faux leather on the side that the cotton is on. I just like the way it looks. You can cut this to be the same width as the faux leather. So depending again on your hardware, as I mentioned before, the width of your strap will be cut that way. Sorry, I keep calling it strap, I mean handle. Then you'll pin these two so that the raw edges, so these, where you press to the center, are against each other. And you'll pin it all the way down. And you'll have that one eighth of an inch of the faux leather showing along the long edge on the side that you have your cotton strap. There's lots of ways to do the double-sided straps. If you have a different method and you really like it, definitely use that method. If you just wanna make your handles where you fold them in half like we did for the crossbody strap, go ahead and do that. These are a bit more time consuming, but I like it. I think it's a little bit prettier adds a little bit more oomph to the bag, I guess you could say. Something different. Okay, so once you have that all pinned, 
you're going to go ahead and sew along all four edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and use the stitch length that you normally like to use when you're sewing your handles and straps. I like to sew with the fabric facing up and the vinyl against the bed of my machine. That way there I just know that I'm getting an eighth of an inch along the edge of the fabric and I'm not missing it this way because if I sew with my vinyl down and my fabric shifts, I may end up not sewing the fabric or cotton part of the handle down and it'll lift up and I have to go back and restitch it. So that is how your handle will look when you've stitched the cotton to one side and the vinyl on the other end. Normally I will stitch down one side, break my stitches, come back and stitch down the other side to prevent, <laughs> to prevent twisting in the handle. I find when I have cotton I don't often really get that twisting so I just leave it but if it was all vinyl, so four layers of vinyl, I would do that because I do find sometimes when I stitch down one side then come back up and go up the other end. I often do find that I will get some twisting in my handle so that's when I'll stitch down one side, break my stitches, come back and stitch down the other end where I started and stopped so that it's both starting and stopping on the same edges. So that's one handle. Again, the short edges are staying raw because these will be concealed within the bag. Nobody will see them when the bag is complete so I'm not too concerned about that. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this, if you are going to see them, you can turn those raw edges under and you can do the same thing with your vinyl as well. You can fold it up, but vinyl, cork, and full leather don't fray, so you don't need to. And there's also the option to use the strap ends as we were discussing when we made the um, crossbody strap. You can also put those on, so then you don't even have to worry about folding your um, cotton under it either because you'll just put the strap end over it and it co conceals all your raw edges. So you'll repeat this process for the second handle and then you're done and you can put those off to the side.